that's how I think that's how I feel about church. The way things were practiced, the way yeah. things, the way people were treated because of doctrine. You know, yeah. not, I mean, we've not even we've not even. I, I mean, racism is down there, but I think we need to talk about relationships in church and, yeah. and what happens when when relationships become public and things yeah. are thinking. The way people are treated then. Is, is yeah. ridiculous, yeah. Mm -hmm. The man gets off stop free, and the woman is is tarnished. Always, yeah. always. always, it's always her fault. No, it's man. always the man. It, that's it's always the man that that that's get that. Yeah, because because it's the woman that texted him. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry that you know that happened, and you know, and that there was nobody there to hold you, and um, and that's what I don't understand when you know when things are falling apart in the church. There's hardly ever, very few people have somebody to really like hold them and to walk with them. And I to, think, I know. think like you said, because I think we are coming, because I remember years ago, the, 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 the in thing was to say, you know, church is the hospital for the sick. And my thing was, yeah, but why do why do people stay sick? The way people yeah, behaved yeah. and carried on, you think these people are really, really sick and they yeah, are getting yeah. better in this hospital. <laughs> That's another reason why I had to leave. I thought, if I stay here, I'm gonna be as sick as they are, and I don't want to be that sick anymore because yeah, some of the people yeah. there were horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a hospital for the sick. I forgot my train of thought now. Why doesn't anybody ever get better? I forgot what I was thinking. <laughs> Um, I was asking why do people not hold other people you know Tra and... traumatized we're all traumatized we're, yeah. all, we're all coming with some sort of trauma yeah. in my case I was born into it but yeah. things happened in church that caused yeah. me trauma I got yeah. spiritually traumatized while I was there yeah. different mm -hmm. reasons lots of different things happened while I was growing up and da 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 da, da. so I became traumatized and then you hold on like I said I remember and I can't even remember. There was a time when all I did was cry. Yeah. Going to work, I was driving. I would drive to work and I would be crying all the way. Get to work, stop crying, do my job, da, 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 get back home. But every morning I would feel, yeah. I get depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel. Um, I just didn't feel good enough. I just did not feel. There's, I don't think there's anything else I can say. I just did not feel good enough, and I felt that I was making a mess of everything in my life. And I was making a mess of everything in my life. Therefore, it was me. There was something wrong with me. And yeah. because and and because I was crying, and I was crying because I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to make it better. Mm -hmm. So everybody in there. It's traumatized for one reason or another, but it's what we do when we're in there that makes the difference. And yeah. how we get from feeling or realize I don't think a lot of people realize that they're traumatized. That's another no, thing. No, no, they're they're fixed, they're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're perfect. And I remember when I started going to therapy, and I'm very I've always been very open because I always think if something's helping me, I want other people to know. And mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I'm in America. I think I was pregnant. I had just given birth to my first. Mm -hmm. So emotions, hormones, like my world is falling apart. I'm coming to the realization that my childhood was really, really messed up. So I start going to therapy and I write a post about it on Facebook at the time and I was just saying how much it was helping me mm. and immediately you know my mom you know calls me and she was just like does that does that mean that you don't believe in Jesus anymore and I was just like I do but I needed help I was really struggling and then she was like yeah some people like you might need therapy yes because of you <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that at the time because I didn't even realize that my problems were from my childhood, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. But I, now I know. I'm just like, I wish I had said that. Um, so she was like, yeah, some people might need therapy, but, you know, I just go to Jesus. And then my father-in-law really, really shamed me. And he was like, the next time we come, should we bring some St. Saint, Saint John's wort with us? And then he was like, also, you know, when you're in America, I suppose you have to do like the Americans go to therapy. 
Oh, wow. So they and literally those two people have been a huge source of a lot of trauma in my life. Yeah. You know, my father-in-law and his racist stuff. And then, you know, my mom and her neglect and abandonment. Yeah. And, and yet both of them, neither of them, have, I don't think they've ever been to therapy. And I they don't see or think that there's anything wrong with them. So yeah. people like you and me carry that shame. Mm. the one that they should probably be carrying mm. and you know I remember as a teenager in my early 20s just really struggling if I was attracted to someone you know because I have to keep myself mm. and and you know and really struggling and crying with God and you know if I even kissed a boy I would feel so guilty mm. and so it always felt like there was something wrong with me and it's only now that I don't feel that mm. and you know, um, even in marriage, I've talked a lot about this, you know, even in marriage for me, sex was such a shameful thing for a really long time mm -hmm. um, because of the purity culture and how a woman should dress and how a woman should behave. Um, and I just walked around with that shame for so long and, and I don't have, you know, most of it. <laughs> so I'm still there, but most of it, I don't have it anymore. And I think it's because I don't, I'm not under the gaze of these judgmental people who are just ready to attack. Yeah. Attack for any, for any reason possible. Well, it's like, um, it's like, my, it's like my current partner, current partner. We've been together 12 years this, this weekend. Oh, <laughs> happy anything. anniversary. Thank you. Not that we've done anything to celebrate this, <laughs> this year. We're all too busy, but yeah, it's 12 You're years. You're on Zoom with me. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's 12 years this year, but I remember because <laughs> that's another thing. Right, so my fiancé, we split up in the June, I think, yeah, June, I think we we're supposed to get married in June, I can't remember the date, and I think it was in June we were supposed to get married, and now, Reese, my current partner, we were at school together, same year, same class, same everything, we hadn't spoken for 20 odd years, maybe more than that, we met, oh. up, we met up on Facebook, and we just started talking, so this was after I'd been ditched yeah right, yes, so yeah. that was the june and we were getting together in the august so it was a bit quick so i yeah. felt away about this being so quick but at the same time i knew it was really good yeah. so i kept it under wraps kept it quiet kept it yeah. so remember this time I've, I've left church completely this is yeah. about year three or four something like that i've left mm -hmm. I'm not very good at counting years and stuff like that, so I'm terrible. So I'm just yeah. making it go along. But I know it was quite a while. Yeah. And so the first year, I kept him quiet. Nobody really knew about him. Then we got an opportunity to get a house together. And, <laughs> yeah, I was going to move in. Now, what happened was my aunt, my mum's sister, she died so all the family had come over from Canada and Barbados and everything. Yeah. So all the family over, fantastic opportunity to bring Greece along to, to the family. So, yeah. so my cousins, my favourite cousin, I'm bringing the boyfriend. You're going to have to um, try and make this all better because it might not go very well. Yeah. And I told him as well, we're going to move in together. And he's a bit like, are you sure it's a good idea? Yeah, it yeah. is. Help me along. So he came to dinner. Of course, everybody's a little bit shocked because they were expecting me to bring anybody home. Of course, he's also white, so a bit like, oh, okay. <laughs> Great thing about Reese, he's an only child. So he makes friends. And we would go away, and by the end of the holiday, he knows everybody in the hotel. <laughs> and he's best mates with everybody in the hotel. Yeah. It's my family, same sort of thing. Life and Soul, the party, everybody's friend. He was eating everything and doing everything and da-da-da-da-da. So everybody loved him. So that was his introduction to the family. And mm -hmm. um, I then have to tell my mum and my dad, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to live together. Um, no, <laughs> married. Uh, and, and you're in your 40s at this point. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. not going to get married either. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's it. 
So they weren't very happy, but no. but they got over it. They got over it's, it. it's not their life. They... No, it's not their life. And the good thing yeah. about it as well, my older brother and my other brother, my two brothers, had already yeah. gone and done something similar. So, okay. <laughs> so, they, so they had to just get over it. And just These got, Adventist children. <laughs> yeah, they were, just had a way with Adventist children. So they kind of had to get over it. But they, they, they uh, probably because I'm the youngest as well, I think they found it a little bit difficult yeah. at the time, but they got over it. And were you ever, were you married before ever? No. Oh, no. no. Okay. No, never yeah. been married, still very single. Well, yeah. single. That's not the right word. I'm not single. I'm in a relationship, just never been. Yeah, just never. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think, you know, I think in my family, they hide behind, you know, the wedding being a God thing. But mm -hmm. it's it's the event, right? They mm -hmm. want the show for everybody, yeah. you know. They don't want people to say, oh, you, <laughs> they didn't do it the right way. And then in my culture, there's a thing called a diary. So mm -hmm. they also want that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did all that and um, it was exhausting. I swear to God, a few weeks before we got married, I was saying to Tim, let's just run away. Let's mm -hmm. elope and get married. Because mm -hmm. it, it became like, just the drama and these are people who are who are church elders my mom was a church elder for ages you know like they all had church positions and yet like they could like ask for too much money for the dowry and then when the money didn't come you know it became a thing and my mom was like you're ruining this for me and I was just like I'm not giving the money it's mm. his family they don't want to mm. give the money and um, yeah. you know stuff like that not getting help with the actual wedding and to me I if my kids don't want to get married in the future it's their lives. Like I'll support them the best way that I can. And if I have the money and they're getting married, I'll chip in and I, I'll help out with something. I'm not just gonna try and get money <laughs> from their spouses or whatever. Mm. It's just wrong. And for me, like, again, just going back to what you were saying about hospital, the, the church being seen as a hospital, mm. um, the cure is there. Right. Mm. If we really believe that God heals and restores and changes people, the cure and the healing and the treatment is there. And yet instead of people taking it and so that they can feel better, they take it, turning it, turn it into a weapon mm. and, and bash people with it. Mm. <laughs> imagine, imagine if everybody literally just surrendered everybody in the church was really just like look at themselves and say okay what issues do I have let, let me give these to Jesus <laughs> you know then the, the church would be like people would be treated in a much better way but no too busy bashing people on the head with but don't, but don't you think church is so isolating though because everybody everybody's trying so hard to keep whatever they've got to themselves. So that's why they can always see the beaming on somebody else's eye to, and they yeah. want to take it out. Yeah. So everybody's everybody's trying to keep in what, what's wrong with them yeah. and then attacking other people for doing the same thing that they're doing. So yeah. so it it's just a perpetual pit. Yeah. And I mean I like I mean I like what you're saying about going to therapy. Um I think I wanted to go to therapy, <laughs> but yeah. I didn't even know where to go, or where to start. Yeah. So I read a lot of self-help books. I read a lot. In fact, I've got a bookshelf here full of them. I mean, every now and again, re scans them and goes, what's that for? What's that about? Why have you got that? <laughs> Still have them, but I read a lot of self-help books. I was, mm -hmm. I was, Joyce Mayers was one of my favourite authors at the time. I read everything that she, that she wrote and just trying to think who else. Did I, did I, have I got a Paula White one? Paula White, who was um, Trump's, before she became Trump's. <laughs> then now I look at it and go, I read her books. I thought she was okay. Not well, I'm not Do you know, at one point I thought she was okay too. I didn't read her books, but I remember watching her, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of those preachers, sometimes when they're starting out, they're fine, they're genuine. Yeah. And then the power and the money corrupts yeah. them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what I think as well. Yeah. 
yeah but yeah you you do need you do need to do some some lots of self searching yeah. for yourself yeah. and figure it out but that's something that you don't you don't you've got to have in church as time went on i i got some very close friends who you could have a real conversation with and talk about real yeah. life you know struggles and you know real life things that were happening you know behind the scenes but a lot of the time you've got to be careful who you talk to in church because you know talk about stab you in the back and throw you under the bus <laughs> yes yeah then. yes and I didn't learn that I've always been an oversharer I'm getting better at sharing stuff after I've processed it or sharing stuff with the right people so now whatever I put on TikTok I've like <laughs> process it to death yeah. um it still gets emotional but it's not brand new yeah. um but yeah when I was younger I would just overshare and I, I was looking for intimacy I was looking for parents literally mm -hmm. you know um and it just never came and yeah yeah some people in church and I I didn't even realize until I had come back from America and you know people who I'd confided in you know, would use stuff that I had told them 10 years before mm. to shame me now mm. because I'm not that person anymore. I'm not, mm. you know? And so there was a lot of like, yeah. And then hearing that somebody had said this, that you said this. And I was just like, but I, <laughs> you know, so yeah. But I imagine, imagine. So what I really like, and I know it's also, it can also get toxic is 12 step groups, right? Mm. If you have genuine people in a 12-step group who are trying to heal, the yeah. whole idea is recognizing that your life has become un unmanageable and, and that mm -hmm. a power greater than yourself can help you. Mm -hmm. Now that power, you get to define for yourself. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be Jesus, doesn't have to be mm -hmm. Buddha, it doesn't, whoever that is, you define mm -hmm. for yourself. And then step three is um, surrendering to that higher power. And then step four is literally like therapy, where you look at your life, and you look at your resentments, your fears, you know, stuff that happened to you. So when I did my step four, in um, uh, a 12 step group that I'm in, it was literally like, just digging up <laughs> this stuff that I even I, I hadn't even talked to anyone in therapy about mm. and then um and it was really shaky but my therapist um therapist no my sponsor she was so good she spent about a whole day from 9 a.m to like 3 p.m listening to my step four mm. and she cried with me when I had never had a white person shed tears about the treatment that I'd gone through with my in-laws mm. and you know and she shed tears and I was like I never had that in church and that woman does not go to church she grew up in a really toxic religion uh, denomination as well mm -hmm. so she doesn't go to church and and she's not sure whether she believes in God but she has like a higher power yeah and she was able to hold space for me for a whole day mm. for me to just release all this trauma, all this stuff. And she didn't have to. Mm. Do you know what I mean? She she could have just said, oh, send, just send me your stuff. I'll read it and whatever. But she sat, she listened, she cried. Mm. And had she been face to face, I know she would have been hugging me. Mm. And I think, you know, one of the, like when you were talking about the church being really isolating and which then turns it into a toxic situation. Mm. If you know that somebody is not going to really see you, and hold mm. space for you, then yes, you do turn into this toxic person that hides their stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if anybody, especially young people, because they haven't learned to hide it, right? Mm. I think that's why young people get attacked a lot. So when we see, see them living their true authentic self, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about them. Stop it. <laughs> are a really good place to like have community and heal but they can also get toxic so I'm not saying they're all mm. perfect because I've heard some horror story but if done right you have space to be known and heard and loved without judgment because we're all recovering we're all sick we're all addicted to something yeah um, yeah I think I think um what have I learned 
I think I'm real. I, I, I mean, yeah, when we talk about racism, I mean, I, I had a horrendous um, work situation, which was toxically racist without, I can't even begin to tell you how bad it was. It was so bad. But yeah. when I left there, um, I just had some very quiet time where I just got very quiet. I slept a lot. I did some thinking and... I slept a lot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you need to. <laughs> slept a lot. I did some thinking because what happened was they made me redundant, which was good. I left with some. I left with. I left with money, which they didn't want me to leave with. So I felt better about the situation. Yeah. Like I said, I had had over a year to just be quiet, um, not mm -hmm. think about it, not have to mm -hmm. deal with it. And you know, the good thing is that now I'm in a in a in a, in a new job. Which is fantastic, and I don't have to, I don't have the same stresses, trials, and tribulations that I had there. But also, um, I think you you or what I've learned to do is is try and pick it apart. Okay, what did they do? What did I do? I need to understand why things happen, yeah. and don't always get the answer. Yeah, seeking, but eventually somebody says something. That goes, ha, 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 that's what it is. I get it now. Like, yeah. you know, you about TikTok, you learn so much from TikTok. Somebody was talking one day about um, bad work situations. And she just, I can't remember what she said, but what she said hit the right spot. I knew these, I knew these people were jealous, but the jealousy didn't make any sense. Yeah. The same way I knew a lot of the time people in church were jealous of me. And that's why they treated me badly. But it never made sense. Why? What are they jealous? I don't get why they would be so toxic. Yeah. But this woman said, so, and I can't remember it now because I think it hit the spot and it's just gone and yeah. disappeared. So I can't even begin to tell you anymore what it was yeah. that made it go in and go, oh, that's it. I get it now. I yeah. feel like I got it. I, yeah. I can move on now. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, I love that you were able to take time to like just sleep because <laughs> I think what we don't understand it, that is that generally as a people in the world, we don't understand that trauma is exhausting. Mm. When I'm triggered, oh my goodness, it takes everything for me to get up. Mm. you know and feed my kids and have a shower and you know so and especially racial trauma I don't know what it is <laughs> you know because I've had different kinds of trauma but there's something about you know when something happens because of your race mm -hmm. I think it's the helplessness of yeah of, you know yeah and just knowing that you live in the minority, knowing that, like, you know, I, I'm not sure what you do for a living, but sometimes it's people who are supposed to be safe people, like they're, they're in professions where mm -hmm. they're supposed to protect. And like racism for me, I find so exhausting. And anytime I go through a racist incident, I, you know, if I didn't have kids, I would, <laughs> I would sleep for, for weeks. Mm -hmm. if I, mm -hmm. um, because it's just completely exhausting.